campaign. And we have two more state title games coming up. It's Cary Grove and Providence Catholic. Dean Bernhardt and Boomer Grigsby will have the call coming up next here on the IHSA State Championship broadcast here on Comcast Sportsnet. And welcome back to Memorial Stadium here in Champaign. Our Class 7A state championship coming up next between Cary Grove and Providence Catholic. The Trojans and the Celtics revisit their rematch from 2009 in the Class 6A title game right here on this field. In the meantime, we have some, we have, we'll be right back. I, I apologize as we are here at Memorial Stadium. We have a story we want to tell you about as we get you set for 7A football. Enjoy. 7A title game coming up next. Kerry Grove in Providence just around the corner. Stay with us. From Memorial Stadium in Champaign, the high school football state championships return to the University of Illinois as daylight gives way to the night sky. We get ready for a 2009 title rematch. One of the most unstoppable offenses in Illinois goes against one of the best defenses in the state. Cary Grove and Providence, and it's next on Comcast Sportsnet. Two state titles already crowned to Sacred Heart Griffin and Nazareth, and Stevenson and Homewood Flossmore await after this one. And let's get to the call for this one as we send it up to Dave Bernhard and Booger Grisby, guys. Well, thank you very much, Matt. And as we take a look at this one, five years ago, we were standing right here when Cary Grove met Providence for the state championship. Cary Grove winning that one. But Boomer, for these two programs, this game really traces back to 2004, 10 years ago. It was a very special year for both programs. Two reasons. It was the last time the Providence Catholic won a state championship, picking up their ninth state title and a pivotal year for Cary Grove and really the creation, changing the culture of their program. They've been so much more consistent since that year. And here in 2014, it's the top two teams in 7A, and that's kickoff coming up next here on Comcast Sportsnet. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium where we are just in advance of the 7A championship ball game. They are chanting CG, CG for Cary Grove. This is how the Trojans found their way here to Memorial Stadium in Champaign. They have dominated their opponents all season long. And you see what they've done to Niles North, St. Charles North, Geneva, and Libertyville. And they are powered by maybe the best offensive line in the state with a couple of all staters well, They say it all starts in the trenches and it really makes a difference. The reason they've been so successful, number 57 offensive tackle, defensive lineman Trevor Rulin. Just an absolute absolute monster. He's got long range. He's committed to Notre Dame. Probably going to play tackle there. And then right there, number 67, offensive guard and defensive lineman Michael Gomez. This kid is an absolute punisher. One of the more feared players in high school football. Finishes all his blocks. Lastly, number 39, Tyler Pennington. This kid is only a sophomore. A very special player. Gary Grove found him, found him young. Knew they had something special and he has really rode the train behind Trevor Rulin and Michael Gomez to lead Cary Grove to the finals here. Providence Catholic, great regular season schedule. Quincy, St. Rita fall in the opening round, had a tight game for a while with Wheaton Warrenville South, and then blew out Mount Carmel in the semifinals. You talk about Al Staters, Miles Boykin and Justin Hunniford. Providence Catholic, I mean, you can't say enough about them. One of the more special programs, a story, a storied program with a lot of tradition. Right there, Miles Boykin, number 81, another Notre Dame recruit, number 12, quarterback Justin Hunniford. This kid is precision pass has unbelievable statistics this season with 40 touchdowns, only three interceptions, makes great game time decisions, really manages this offense. He's been just so successful in making sure that he gets the ball in the hands of Boykin and the other weapons. It may be the most anticipated game of this entire weekend. It is coming your way next. The Cary Grove Trojans of Providence Catholic Celtics. HSA championships are proudly presented by Country Financial. For your auto, home, life, business, and retirement needs, call the Country Financial representative near you. Grow your own way. Great to have you with us as we are ready to start the 7A championship ball game. Providence Catholic, nine time state champs for Cary Grove. They won it all in 2009 when they defeated Providence Catholic 34 to 17. The seniors today, well, they were seventh graders that year. Harry Grove to get the ball first. And near the 24-yard line. Let's check in with our sideline reporter, Kelly Crow. All right, guys, two years ago, Trevor Rulin, Michael Gomez, right here on the same stage, started as sophomores. And after the game, of course, they they um, experienced what was second place finish. And so after the game, in the parking lot, vowed to one another, they would get back here before their days at school were over. And sure enough, here they are 
are once again with the chance to bring home and finish that task they started a couple years ago. And that year in 2009, it was a second place finish to Creek Moni. And head coach Brad Seberg of Cary Grove said this Providence team reminds him a lot of that Creek Moni team. This crowd is about as jacked as any game that we have had here today. A four yard pickup on first down. And of course, the carry will go to that sophomore we just talked about, Tyler Pennington. If you have a love for football, they say it's made and break in the trenches, and rarely do they get the amount of love and appreciation that they deserve. But Gomez and Ruin are names that you're going to be hearing throughout this game. They play both ways for Kerry Grove and are just dominant players. I've never seen an offensive line punish and finish blocks as well as both of these guys. Running the triple option, the quarterback Jason Gregoire with the pitch. He'll kick it out to Kevin Hughes, and let's go to the other sideline and check in with Garrett Wool. Today is a special day for Providence. With a win today, they will have the 10th state championship, which is also on the evening of their 10th anniversary of their last state championship. And they couldn't be headed in the battle with two better players, and Justin Hunterford and the player of the year, Miles Boykin, who was the fourth receiver in 79 years to win the player of the year award. Back up to you guys in the booth. Thanks, Garrett. That was the Champagne News Gazette that designated that honor to Miles Boykin. And that's indeed for Providence. Their motto this year, the quest for X, is in Roman numeral 10 for the reasons Garrett just mentioned. You see a little bit of deception here right away from Kerry Grove. Just running that little normal orbit motion, but then choosing not to snap the ball to draw Providence offsides. You see the wing back just makes that little orbit motion, kind of stomps his feet. Providence used to seeing him do that every time and snap the ball, trying to make a judgment call. And when the ball is going to be snapped, bring him off sides. Number 92, David Charneau, 6'1", 215-pound junior. And a first down for the Trojans. Pennington. Tyler Pennington will be going both ways. Had over a thousand yards rushing last year as a freshman. Here are your officials in our 6A championship, our 7A championship ball game tonight. Kevin Rowland is your referee. Robert Schiffbauer, the linesman. The umpire, Martin Cunningham. James Knopf is your line judge and the back judge, Scott Gary. They are very happy with the weather that we have here tonight. Temperature about 50 degrees. The wind is very strong. That will be a factor tonight. It's blowing from right to left. Gary Grove runs the ball 90% of the time, so it will not necessarily impact them. And that is the game for the Trojans right there with Tyler Pennington for a first down. Number 67 leading the way. We've talked about him before. As you can see there, number 57, if you notice when you see the top of his number, that is because he has pancaked the other player. You see 67 Gomez there and 57 Rulin just smashing players. They're just so dominant, so explosive off the line. The pitch. Hughes will be thrown down. Emmett Trost, number eight, for the Celtics after a four-yard pickup. One thing with this Providence defense, Boomer, they are quick, and they'll come and get you. Well, they're going to have to be. I mean, you know, in the triple option here, you have the threat of handing the ball off to Pennington inside. But the way Providence is going to have to defend this, each time that Kerry Grove is attacking the perimeter, they need to rely on those defensive backs to, to come up to make a play or the safeties that are going to have to run the alley in order to stop the running back behind the line of scrimmage. Quarterback Jason Gregoire, 6'4". You can see over top a lot of different places. And a big stick put on by number six. Brendan O'Hara. Kevin Hughes got popped just as he was making his cut. You see Kerry Grove run a little crisscross action here, pulling Gomez and Rulin. And O'Hara does a great job of beating that block, coming in underneath Gomez. See the big guys pulling around. He just shoots underneath and really fires his hips and shoulders and lays a vicious hit. Brandon O'Hara playing for family pride. His cousin, Larkin Hanselman, plays on the other side. Larkin Hanselman for Kerry Grove. And a flag will come out right at the end of that run on the carry. Matt, Matt Sutherland, Sutherland, another two-way player for the Trojans. Sutherland checks in with 581 yards rushing. The holding call to go against Kerry Grove. 13-0. This season, Providence Catholic at 12 and 1. 
Providence only lost coming to Loyola Academy, a 10-7 ball game. We flip their ball around to the other side. We flip the ball around when Providence gets the ball. Boomer will be able to talk about why that game kind of went against Providence in terms of pressuring the quarterback and limiting Miles Boykin and how that could impact tonight's strategy for Mark Coglanese for Providence. Well, you, you can't take anything away from Loyola. They did a tremendous job. They had a great game plan. They earned that victory. They, they put Hunterford under a lot of pressure and forced him to make some difficult throws. But really, Providence kind of went away from Miles Boykin. When you have a, a receiver who is that powerful and that tall and that much of a threat, you just have to have make more attempts at getting the ball in his hands. Gregoire only averages five passes per ball game, and he finds Larkin Hanselman, and then that ball is loose. And Providence will pick up the turnover. On the fumble recovery, number 95, Brendan Tracy. So a four-minute drive comes up short. Providence Catholic to get their hands on the ball. The giveaway by the Trojans. Providence will get their hands in the ball four minutes into this ball game. It's because of this turnover. The pass, the first pass of the game from quarterback Jason Gregoire for Kerry Grove. He was looking for Larkin Hanselman. He finds Hanselman here. See the ball, it almost looks as if he didn't really have enough time to fully complete that. Have to see it from another angle, but it looked like Providence came in there. The ball is. He's caught right there. He's making his football move. You can't really see if he's bobbling up. It was a great job, though, by number one, Michael Maddy, coming over and stripping that football out. So the early turnover will put the ball in the hands of Justin Hunterford in the Providence offense, an offense that averages 37 points per game, and they rack up 377 total yards per game. Hunterford quickly to the air. He'll get it to Richie Warfield, sophomore running back. Warfield will get about nine yards on the first play of the game for the Celtics. Richie Warfield played freshman ball, skipped over his sophomore year of football. So as a sophomore, he jumps right to the varsity. He has been an absolute spark for this team. He gets the reception there, but he checks in with over 700 yards rushing. A very special player, and they know they have a great one. I mean, think how difficult that is to be at a program like Providence and have the players in the tradition and be able to just skip your sophomore year and go right to varsity. First catch of the night for Miles Boykin. He'll have it inside the 45-yard line, a pickup of seven and a first down. It's so impressive at these larger schools when you see some of these, how powerful and how special some of these young players are. I mean, th these are some of the bigger schools in the state of Illinois. And a lot of times at the smaller ones, you'll see some guys being brought up early, but to be that much of an influence, to be that powerful, to be a difference maker, and to make such an impact at the, as a sophomore at the varsity level. See, 19 touchdowns that is a Providence record. Warfield's first carry of the night. He'll get a yard. That's about it. Stop there. And number 31, Travis Meyerson. It's a whiteout for Kerry Grove tonight. Well, I was looking for him to take a shot to Boykin early here. I mean, everyone knows how dominant of a player he is, but you really need to show that early on the game because it changes up the way the defenses are going to have to scheme against him. If they're just going to play man coverage on him or even just with two, he's the kind of player that he's a 50-50 ball threat. Just throw the ball up, and odds are he's going to come down with it. Screen and a lot of room for Warfield. He will get it up to the 30-yard line and a first down. And this is the diversity of the Providence attack. Throwing the screens, throwing passes in the flat. This one for 15 yards. A great play call by Providence. You can see how aggressive Kerry Grove was up front. They have everybody rushing. You can see Tyler Pennington was blitzing in there. It's a great call to make when you have a team that's blitzing and playing very aggressive to get it to Warfield, following the big guys. Ground, Warfield will bounce forward. Short pickup on first down. Richie Warfield has battled some injuries. Actually, he missed the first round of the playoffs, a right leg injury. Last week, he had three touchdowns in the win over Mount Carmel. Miles Boykin has also missed time with an injury. He dislocated a, his pinky finger. He missed some playoff time as well. Hunterford able to throw on the move, and he finds Mark 
Mike Markasovic. 6-1 junior. That's a seven-yard pickup. Hunterford so impressive all year long with his accuracy. Feeling a little bit of pressure there, but makes this throw on the run, rolling out. Doesn't have a chance to plant his feet. He's just been so accurate all season long. One of the keys of the game for Kerry Grove was to put pressure on Hunterford just to try to rattle the senior just a bit. Nobody's really been able to do it this year. Well, they knew that coming in this game, that one of their best coverages is simply to apply a lot of pressure to the quarterback and try to disrupt some of the routes off the ball. You, you can't give Hunterford a chance to just be comfortable in the pocket. He has such precision and such accuracy, and with these giant receivers, has threats to throw the ball downfield. Like, you have to put some stress on him to force him to make some bad throws. Third in the yard for the Celtics. Warfield has it and more. Inside the 10 where it will be first down and goal to go for Providence. 10 yards for Warfield on that carry. Providence on that prior play got a sideline warning. Of course, you get one of those. After that, if you crowd that sideline a bit, flag comes out, you are indeed penalized. Somehow Warfield waits and finds the hole. Great patience by Warfield. It was a great job there. They actually just came back with the same play they ran before for a more significant gain, the GT play where they're pulling the guard and the tackle. You can see how patient he is here. He's coming up to the line. He really sets up that block with the offensive lineman. Just kind of patiently then plants his left foot and comes back up inside. Saw him coming behind big old fit number 55, Mike Zott, 6'2", 306 pounder. Just things that you cannot teach a running back. Having patience, great vision, understanding how to set up his blocks, knowing the proper angles. Second down and goal. Throwing it up, then a bit too long. He was looking for his six foot five inch tight end, Nate Vavoda. Vavoda headed to Iowa, basketball player for Providence. Not played football until he got to Providence Catholic his freshman year. And that is one thing that Celtics will look to exploit. Their wide receivers tall, but the defensive backs for Kerry Grove quite short. I mean, the averages are, are, are utterly amazing. I mean, Kerry Grove averaging five foot eight, and Providence averaging six foot three. I mean, they, these guys almost stand a foot taller than them. Warfield, and he will be yanked back. Richie Warfield thought he had something. And you see number 57 being helped to his feet. That's Trevor Rulin, the All-Stater. He, along with Miles Boykin for Providence, headed to Notre Dame. You see Rulin just coming through inside here. He's just such a load. He's so strong. He's got great intangibles with very long arms, great reach, and plays with very good leverage. Kerry Grove defense has been up to the task. A first and goal has now become fourth down and goal. About a yard to go for a score. And the Celtics to go for it. Boykin to the left. Warfield, he's in. Providence takes possession. They take it down the field and they go on top six to nothing. Really like this decision by Providence. Really like it. You're in the state finals. You're playing against a team like Harry Grove. You got a chance to your team at the one yard line going for it on fourth down instead of trying to take a field goal. Punch it in early and put some points on the board. They're going to have the same mentality playing a team like Harry Grove that they did against Carmel. You're going to try to get out to an early lead because they don't play from behind very well. P.J. Kolakowski with the extra point. The turnover leads to a touchdown. On fourth down, they call Richie Warfield's number, and he in the line produce. Providence Catholic fans, they throw that green smoke and green powder on the kickoff, and they are covered in it here, and they see themselves on the board. Glad you've joined us here in your 7A championship ball game. <laughs> That's a little frightening right there. <laughs> I like it, though. I like it. 
Well, Justin Hunterford, four of five on that drive for 38 yards. Richie Warfield carries six times for 22 yards. Also caught two passes for 24 yards. It was a 60-yard drive in the 11 plays, 429. And the Celtics made it look easy. They did, just very balanced on offense, utilizing all of their weapons. They're giving the ball to Warfield, going to Boykin, trying to make an attempt to hit the big tight end. From the 10-yard line. Harry Grove to have it, starting at their own 25. Providence, strong offensively. They take it right down the field. Richie Warfield with the touchdown, and that is the celebration. Oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> Green dust cloud. <laughs> some like it, some don't. <laughs> Second possession of the game for the Trojans. They held the ball for over four minutes. Tyler Pennington, five yards on first down. This is a big offensive line for Kerry Grove. In fact, folks who've watched them all year say you will not believe this line. You've got Trevor Rulin, 6'4", 280. The little guy has Owen Henriquez at 6'190". Peter Badgett goes 235. Michael Gomez, 260. Scotty Topol. Rounds it out at 240 pounds. This kid is so impressive. I mean, for only being a sophomore, just how hard he runs. This is what Kerry Grove will do. I mean, they will ground and pound. You see it's coming down. He takes a little bit outside, but he lowers that shoulder and actually initiates contact with the linebacker. Instead of receiving the ball, he's out punishing the defenders himself. And Kerry Grove has done this, and they've done this so well all season long. It's a different type of offense. A lot of times in high school football, as we've seen earlier, you see a triple option. You see it more of a wing tee or a, or a double bone. And another five-yard pickup. We'll talk about Tyler Pennington. Last year rushed for over 1,000 yards as a freshman. He didn't start until the fourth game. Here in the playoffs, he has certainly had a string. Last week against Libertyville, 119 yards and four scores. We can see how well they blocked down on that play. I mean, that entire edge is completely caved down, and he has he just follows that edge up to the next level. Gregoire to keep it. And that offensive line surges seven yards is a piece of cake. So powerful, guys. I mean, you can see their splits here a little bit wider. You can see Gomez, the, the right guard, that just kind of plows up there through. See 67 there pushing out the way. You got Pennington coming in, and the other, the other up back coming through to log. And very quickly, the Trojans near midfield. Pennington. He is grabbed there by Jimmy Sharkey. School record tackles by Sharkey this season. 198 total tackles, solo and assist. And the sophomore met by the senior. Hello. Great pursuit by Sharkey. Kind of situation a middle linebacker sometimes will overrun this. It's almost like when you're coming downhill, there's no one there. It almost feels like you're not doing something right and you can be too aggressive. He does a good job of coming downhill, taking a proper angle, staying patient in the hole and making that play. That will be five yards going against Providence Catholic, and it will set up a third down and short. Such a great call coaching that they do this play. I mean, what, what this does is it forces the defensive line to honor the snap. They can't try to get a jump, so it gives the offense the advantage of being more explosive. It's the second time that they've tried this little slight orbit motion and decided not to snap the ball to draw Providence off sides. Pennington, room to run. Tyler Pennington coming into this game. He averages seven yards per carry, and that's the number he hits, a seven-yard run first down. Such a good runner, but also what's impressive about him is you see that he always keeps his shoulders down. A lot of times he has two hands on the football, but he's very good at picking his feet up and putting them down and navigating through the traffic and the mess on the ground.
Gregoire to keep. And there's nothing there. Jimmy Sharkey there, number 25 off the bottom of the pile. Luis Vasquez. Harry Grove with five first downs. Luis Vasquez, 6'2", 190-pound senior defensive lineman. He's a hurdler in track. <laughs> I, I have never, Boomer, I have never heard of a defensive lineman being a hurdler. I, I mean, if you would have asked me, I would have made the assumption he was a wide receiver. <laughs> We have had offense. Both teams moving the ball in the first quarter. But the final touch for Providence, a touchdown by Richie Warfield. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium. Providence leading Cary Grove in the 7A state finals, 7 to nothing right now. However, the Trojans with the ball continuing a seven play drive as we get started here in the second quarter. And it's that ground and pound that Boomer was talking about, the physicality that head coach Brad Seberg said sets his team apart from others. It's the third quarter, he says, that they've really pulled away from teams. And it's because, guys, they just wear them down. And we're seeing exactly that right now. Right, Kelly, number 57, number 67. That would wear me down just looking at those two monsters. And another big gain on second down. And this drive moves on. Harry Grove in the first quarter had the ball for seven and a half minutes. That's a 10-yard run. Another good job by Pennington. You see this time they had their splits out a little bit wider, but ultimately, again, ruling came down to the next level on the inside. He does a good job. Pennington does staying inside, coming through, making some contact, and just keeping his legs moving. The safeties. On that play, Michael Madej and Eric Carroll forced to make the tackle. And now it's Jake Rose. He'll throw Pennington down. Tyler Pennington, busy man here tonight. Pennington will be Pennington's 10th carry already. We're just 30 seconds into the second quarter. There's Mark Coglanese, ninth year head coach. He finished second in 2009 to Cary Grove. Of course, he was longtime assistant defensive coordinator for legendary coach Matt Sempner out of nine state titles. Here's Jason Gregoire with the cut and the score. Great job by Gregoire here. That's a 25 yard touchdown run for Gregoire. That's his 11th rushing touchdown of the season. And this is what they do. I mean, you just said it. They gave the ball to Pennington. Just keep going with him. Keep going with him. This time deciding to pull the ball out. Providence bites on Pennington. Greg Ward takes it up and around and makes a good cut back into the end zone. Now the extra point attempt from Colin Walsh. Walsh 50 of 54 this year. And with that, we are tied. Kerry Grove has had the ball twice. They turn it over the first time, led to a Providence score. They get it again. Gregoire, the final 25 yards, 7-7. A whiteout for Kerry Grove here tonight. The fans from up north have come down to Champaign. And again, this, these two sets of student sections, the two wildest we have had down here this weekend. Well, for Kerry Grove, they went 75 yards in 10 plays. Every one of those 10 plays on the ground. They have thrown one pass tonight. That's not abnormal, but they will put the ball up if they need to. Well, they've thrown the ball one time, and it was actually a completed pass, and then Providence did a good job forcing the fumble and recovering it. You know, it is something that they've done, and they've done it early in games. I mean, they ground and pound you like this, and then run a little play action and take a shot. Warfield came up straight. That kickoff, good field position for Providence Catholic, and let's check in with former Chicago Bear Garrett Wolf. Providence' lone loss this year was 10-7 on a late field goal, and the thought was that they didn't go to Miles Boykin enough. Well, they wanted to make a concerted effort today and go to Miles Boykin as often as possible and exploit the mismatch that presents itself every time he walks on the field. He has 36 touchdowns in 27 career games, and has been an unbelievable threat for them this entire season. And is one reception enough in the first quarter. Now keep in mind, Hunterford throwing against the wind here in the second. And this really could make a difference. You know, if he's trying to take the ball long downfield and lofts and there's too much air underneath the ball with the wind blowing like this, it could really make a difference. He's probably need to keep these throws short, just like they're doing here. They get it into the hands of Mark Markasovic, Mike Markasovic, 
Gain of seven on first down. Just get Marcus Ovick running on the outside here, and you see Boykin leading out front. This is another thing he does very well. But Kerry Grove doing a great job of coming downhill. Their safety's running the lanes, but another great example, something that a lot of wide receivers do not do well is the stock block out there, keeping his feet moving, his hands on the inside, not pulling on the jersey. You see a lot of holding calls on wide receivers when the ball is run to the perimeter. Of course, in high school ball, when your knee is down, you are down. Warfield very much involved here tonight in the offense. It will be third and short. We play two minutes into the second quarter. This team's offense has pretty much had their way. Wildcat formation with Boykin in the backfield. He will hand it off. And that should be enough for the first down. Interesting little twist. And again, just put something else in the mind of the defense. It's good little deception. He does a good job handing the ball off there. That mesh point, you know, is a, is a circumstance that a lot of times guys could fumble that football, especially if it's something you don't do very often. He does a good job making sure that the ball is all the way in the pocket to Warfield and he follows the two big guys right up the middle for the first down. It'll be interesting to see if that's going to be the only time that we see that look or if they're going to utilize that a little bit more. I mean, it's something that Kerry Grove is going to have to honor in a different way. This time Warfield is thrown down by Michael Gomez. Trevor Rulin. Before Kerry Grove gets all the publicity, Rulin headed to Notre Dame, but Rulin has the utmost respect for Michael Gomez. I mean, it's really incredible. I mean, Rulin's been quoted as saying that he is a better player than me. I mean, it, wanted to, it shows a lot of character for Rulin, a humble player who's already en route to Notre Dame, but says that Gomez is the best player that he's seen, that he's just he's overlooked by the bigger schools because of the height issue. But I can tell you, I've watched a lot of film on them in the playoffs, and this kid is an absolute animal. He's a punisher. They will have a role for him somewhere in college football. I know he's currently looking at Army at the moment, but he will be a force player. Marcus Sovic turns the corner just as a block to set him free. Matt McNabb may be flagged for the block on the right edge. There's Jason Gregoire. He's touchdown run of 25 yards has tied this game at seven, and that will be a hold against the Celtics. The pace of this game is flowing along. And again, it's because each offense has been able to pretty much take care of business in the way they want to. Block in the back. On the offense, number nine. 10-yard penalty, second down. The wind here that Providence is working into around 20 to 22 miles per hour. We saw earlier today that num number of scores were to the end zone to your left to the north end zone. The 5A game with Montini and Sacred Heart Griffin, all the scores were actually heading towards the other end zone. No one was willing to really throw up into the wind. I think if they're going to stay to the air, they're going to stay with shorter throws. Just like that one to Boykin. Harry Grove fans like that gang tackling, and that is exactly what the Trojans will do defensively. They absolutely swarm to the ball, great quickness, especially in their secondary. These guys are just so scrappy. They have a lot of speed, a lot of toughness. They play with an immense amount of heart, but I mean, that was a great picture that you've seen there. Literally, people talk about gang tackling, but every single hat on Kerry Grove's defense was on that pile on top of Miles Boykin right there. Third down and 22. Ten yard penalty, a major factor in this particular possession. Hunterford squares up the shoulders, and fires high and wide, and Providence will have to punt. Kerry Grove is just so difficult to throw the ball against. I mean, they, they run this defense. You see a lot of times in high school people running a 3-3 defense, and it's difficult 
for offensive linemen to block because there's six guys on five. But Kerry Grove actually runs more of a 3-2-6. It's actually the old dime package that I only remember from video games. We never even played a dime package in my years in the National Football League. Uh, Prevent had a four-man front still. Uh, and they do just such a great job, though, of, of dropping their guys back and playing within their zones. They don't just cover a spot. They cover routes. Zach Pitch with the punt. Willie Hartke picked it up. Tried to prevent about 10 yards, and he did. That ball would have taken a hop, but as it is, three-yard return after the 35-yard punt, and Kerry Grove. The ball after Hartke is brought down. Last time, Trojans had it. Went 75 yards and 10 plays. It's great coverage by Jack Pell there, just coming down, making sure that you get an arm on him. As long as you can slow down the return, man, you have a whole army of guys coming behind you to help ensure that tackle. Pennington for three. See what's going unique about Kerry Grove's offense here is you see Wilmington do it earlier in the 3A game where they, they run a double tight, uh, a wing, and you can see up backs that are up on the line and they run this triple option. And that's the traditional way that you've kind of seen it through high school football where Kerry Grove will actually line up with a double tight and their backs are more in the backfield, more a slot position. The option. At Sutherland stopped by Sharkey. So this is the 12th straight play that Kerry Grove has run the ball. And you talk about how over the course of the game, it can wear you down with the big offensive lineman. But how about right now in the second quarter when you just keep getting pounded and pounded? Well, and it shows to maybe why they have taken away and kind of took off on teams in the third quarter. I mean, you see this time, he likes to run in the triple option, doesn't hand the ball to the, to the fullback, decides to pitch the ball there. But Province does a great job of playing gap assignment, gap accountable football. They always have to make sure that they have somebody on each possible person that can get the ball. 18 of the 19 plays, and now 19 of the 20 plays Kerry Grove has run have come on the ground once again. Number 50, Jimmy Sharkey will wrap him up. This is 7A, but coming up next, it's a big one in 8A. A lot of folks have been waiting on this one. In fact, a lot of folks have been waiting on it since week two when Stevenson played Homewood Flossmoor. Homewood Flossmoor with a 24-7 lead in that ball game before Stevenson came back and scored 20 straight points and ended up defeating the Vikings. That game, well, the pace we're going, probably will kick off around 7.30. But the way the pace this game is going, this is we're already halfway through the second quarter. And now a big fourth down and one. First down and more. Boy, that offensive line fires off the ball. It's such a great job there. I mean, you can see the wall, the wedge that they create on that left side. And then the up back coming in there doing another great job. Number 26, Kevin Hughes coming up there to kind of fill in the last part of that little wedge. It gives Pennington a great little angle to rush for that extra yard. Well, and they will flip flop. Kerry Grove will flip flop. Ruland and Gomez to either side of the line. That time they were both on the left side. Ruland tackle, Gomez guard, and that's where they ran. And here's Gregoire. He busted it for 25 yards in a score the last time he carried. This one goes for 19. Triple option, so difficult to defend. Have to play such disciplined defense. I mean, they're pounding, they're pounding the ball, and you once again fake the ball to Pennington in the middle. Decides to keep it, keep the ball around the edge, takes it for another big run. He's making very good decisions on when he decides to actually give the ball or pull it and run it himself. The ninth first down of the game for Kerry Grove. Pennington again. 5'10", 190-pounder. Trevor Rulin needs a little bit of an assist. I respect Kevin Hughes for yanking up the big man to his feet. <laughs> quite, quite the size difference there. Once again, I mean, you just see how powerful they are at the line of scrimmage. They knew coming in in this game, one of their keys, Brad Seberg, their coach talked about, is they have to win at the point of attack. It's something they've done so well all season long. To the short side of the field in the pit. Louis Vasquez. Great pursuit on Hughes. 
be third down at about five. So far, Providence has done a great job of extending the plays, pushing them outside and running them down from the inside. You see this little point right there. Where Gregoire has the ball actually in putting his hands, decides to pull it, looks at his next read and gives the pitch. That will not be enough. Pennington, 15 carries already for nearly 70 yards. And another fourth down for the Trojans. This will be fourth and two. Number eight, Emmett Trost coming in there. But once again, it was Sharkey. Sharkey and Pennington are having some nice close quarters combat, some high velocity impact that they're meeting. It's usually always on Providence side of the ball, though, a testament to Kerry Grove's offensive line. Kerry Grove needs about a yard and a half. He'll go to Sutherland. He will have it. The timing for Matt Sutherland, a three-year starter. He's the head coach, or the son of defensive coordinator Don Sutherland. One of his favorite memories, we talked about 2004 and our Open when Kerry Grove finished second. Uh, he was on the sidelines in that title game. It's a great call there by Kerry Grove. I mean, you have the big guys. We keep talking about it, but rather than bringing that ball inside, actually, you know, these are the kind of offensive linemen that can move, actually, too. So sweeping the ball outside, following the big guys, and getting the yard for the first down. And this drive just continues. Two fourth down conversions, and then a good gain on first down. For Ty Pennington, he'll get about nine yards on that carry. They're going to hustle back to the line of scrimmage. They'll need a little bit of help. It was Jake Roast, or three, that got the arms on Pennington. Carry Grove with 241 to play in a half has already rushed for 149 yards. Providence, 22 yards on the ground. It was interesting to see them go quickly on that that last snap. I believe they're actually just trying to get some plays in while they have the win. You might be seeing a, a, a potential pass opportunity coming up on this drive unless they just continue to keep driving the ball exactly the way they're doing. That is another first down. They will move the chains once again. This clock winding down very quickly here. Providence has not had their hands on the ball too often tonight. Just a couple of possessions for the Celtics. And another first down, this one from the 12. Two yards for Pennington. You know, and this is much like a baseball pitcher. This fastball is working. No need to go to the curve. He like said they're not a wing T team. They're a triple option team. But a lot of triple option teams, what they will do is they will run the exact same play over and over again until you stop them. Providence does a good job again this time doing better at the line of scrimmage. And then Sharkey, number 50, coming down from the linebacking position to help bring him down. Gregoire the keep. And the big man will go in. Six foot four inch senior Jason Gregoire, his second touchdown of the night gives Kerry Grove the lead. They are fired up on this sideline and have every right to be. Once again, Gregoire making a very good decision, deciding to pull the ball instead of giving, just following everyone through the hole. Colin Walsh. Back-to-back -back possessions, back-to-back -back scores. Brad Seberg in his fourth year. Time out, time out. Carey Grove, a state title in 2009. And they've got a leg up here late in the first half. There should be 14 push-ups going on right there. Carey Grove, thanks to Jason Gregoire's two touchdown runs, taking that 14 to seven lead. 
Gregoire, the recipient, he'll get the stats behind his name, but it's all about that offensive front, Boomer. He's done such a good job creating that push, and actually you see that on the touchdown there. But once he got to the one-yard line, Tyler Pennington coming in there and helping shove the pile. I love seeing that at any level of football where once the running back's made his play, this time the quarterback keeping it, and everyone kind of coming there and just urging and pushing as a team trying to drive into the end zone. Each team has had a possession here in the second quarter and have used a combined 10 minutes and 30 seconds off the clock. That's a long ball. A flag is out as the recovery is made by Matt McNabb. Let's see what this flag is all about. Boy, that's a break for Providence Catholic right there. No matter what this penalty is for. Kick catching interference on the kicking team. That's a 15 yard penalty from the spot. First down. And that turns out to be good in a big way for the Celtics. Ball is picked up by Hughes. So I didn't really understand that call there. I didn't hear it correctly, but the ball had went over 10 yards. I'm not exactly sure what the penalty was called on. I mean, ultimately it was, it was a great job of Kerry Grove getting, but then he fumbled on the end of it and Providence recovering, but this turned into a very good field position situation for Providence. All right, starting in midfield. A flood to right side. Hunterford looking that way and delivers on the money. Nate Vavoda on the catch. Let's take a look back at that kickoff. They called illegal. Well, there was contact. Providence doing the blocking. Right. Which obviously Providence laid the initial contact, though. It was the first contact on the play. It appears if the Providence players fell down. And that, speaking of down, that is Nate Vavoda, the tight end, playing his college football at the University of Iowa. This is an important position for Providence here. I mean, such a threat at tight end is another 6-5 target to have a guy that you, know, you can have so two deep, very tall threats on each side of the field. I mean, that particular play there in a trips formation had Boykin alone on the other side to have another big target like Bavoda. I mean, I'm sure the injury here, well, he just took a very hard hit. They're working on his leg down there. Kerry Grove and Providence Catholic. Certainly not first timers in the championship game. The Trojans finishing second in 2004 and then a couple of years ago losing to Crete Moni, winning a title in 2009 for Providence Catholic. Nine state championships and three second place finishes. And that's that kickoff again. Vovoda. See how much weight he was able to put on that right side. It's good to see him putting weight yeah. on. I mean, you, you could see from the replay that it just it, it looked a little funny. That, you know, he kind of misplaced his foot on the way down, almost like he hurt the knee a little bit before and fell to the ground kind of awkwardly there. But it's very good to see him walking, taking himself off the field. The minute 10 to play here in the first half, Providence not only was going to get the ball in decent field position, add 15 yards of penalty, they had it across midfield and plenty of time and not that much distance. To go, that penalty and a kickoff It'll create quite an impact as we head towards halftime. Second down and four. Warfield out of the backfield, dances out of bounds, short of the first down. Maybe could have taken an extra couple of steps. Stops the clock. All three timeouts remaining. For each of these teams. Slow down and two at the 41 yard line. Looking into the eyes of Justin Hunterford, member of Providence Catholic's state baseball championships from the past spring, joined by Michael Madej and Zach Pitch. Once again, count the number of white jerseys near that ball. But it will be enough for a first down for Warfield. 
Warfield does a very good job here stretching this play out. You see him behind the big guys, kind of had his hand right on the hip there, but he sees a little opening, realizes that they only need a yard or so. Ducks inside. You see how patient he is here. He's got the hand on the hip of his offensive lineman, decides to cut back up inside. Good job getting the yard, but then look at the gang tackling. Just perfect, swarming to the football. Providence will take that timeout under a minute to play. Halftime, we will recap all the statistics. It's been a rapidly played first half because basically Cary Grove, the only time they've stopped the clock was when they picked up a first down. Again, coming up later, it'll be our Class 8A championship ball game. Stevenson and Homewood Flossmore. Stevenson, perfect 13 0. And Homewood Flossmore with a couple of losses, one of them to Stevenson. See number 84 and Abel Voda around the huddle. Not sure whether he's going back into the game, but it looks, it appears so. Or maybe he's just listening in. No, it's very good to see that he's actually going to be going back into the game. No, and a heads up play here by Warfield. The helmet coming off there and pushing it right back on very fast. <laughs> Very heads up play. Otherwise, he would have had to sit out of play. It's a veteran move in a moment like that. Hunterford stepping up. And he's inside the 30. You know, you could just see from the All-Stater Justin Hunterford his great field awareness. Justin Some Hunterford. people have that great athletic vision. You can just see that Hunterford is one of those. I mean, incredible player. I mean, statistics are off the charts. His touchdown to interception ratio of just how comfortable he has been in the pocket and even how he's thrown the ball under duress. The great throw right here to Warfield out in the flat, hitting him on a swing route to pass the first down marker. You know, and he just stared down quarterback Connor Leach. He said, you know what, I'm going to put the ball right where I want it, and you can't do anything about it. The ball had great velocity. He was in a good spot. He was just so comfortable in the pocket and his decision-making skills. Even the play before, the way that you've seen, he, was, he had some time. He has threats downfield. And rather than just throwing the ball up, even as I've offered he should have done earlier in the game, makes a good decision, decides to tuck it, and then slide on the end. Now in trouble, he will have to create. Stays alive, finds his man. Marcus Selvig at the five-yard line. 14 yards, it was all Justin Hunterford. His receivers stayed alive, first and goal Celtics. Outstanding play by Hunterford here. I mean, you cannot do this any better. He drops back in the pocket. He scoots up in the pocket, feels a little pressure, spins all the way out to the right. He's able to make his target and come to a stop. He's still under pressure. Receiver does a great job finding an opening. I mean, you can only cover for so long. Kerry Grove doing a good job of having pressure. Somebody's got to bring him down. Got to take a little better tackle angle there, but a great job by Hunterford. Stepping up in the pocket, rolling out of it, coming to a stop, playing his feet to make this throw. It's the way that he navigates through the pocket there and having the awareness of knowing when guys are around you to your blind side and to put the brakes on here. Receiver doing a great job of coming back across the field there, finding an opening. Mike Markosevich does a great job. Once that your quarterback scrambles out of the pocket, it's up for your receivers to kind of break off from their original route and try to find an opening. They're trying to help the quarterback find a way to get, it, get the ball. For Justin Hunterford, he just keeps adding to his record totals. These are his records he has set this season. Completions in a game, he had 30. Career completions coming into this game, 387 yards in a game. His single game record at 341. Season record at 3157. Career yards at 5102. And seven touchdown passes in a game. All of those Providence Catholic records. Comes into this game with 40 touchdown passes, just three interceptions. Providence looking for the tie. If they can push this one in, they will get the ball to start the third quarter. It's a great play, though. I mean, that's what everything that you need in a quarterback. I mean, you like the precision. You love his accuracy. But how he could extend that play and kind of create something out of nothing. Warfield for only a yard. Providence will take the timeout with timeout. 10 seconds left. Providence Catholic, final timeout. As you heard, that is it in terms of timeouts. They will have to go into the end zone. Just hand the ball to Warfield, have the Poland lineman coming around. Kerry Grove doing a good job. Even, it's interesting, running that three-man front. 
how efficient they can be. And, and another tribute to that is because of the linemen. They have Rulin and Gomez. They have penetrators that are on their defensive line. You have a linebacker like Tyler Pennington, and a lot of times they'll bring up and kind of blitz through a gap. They'll do some stunting, but it's so disruptive at the line of scrimmage, even though they only have three players with their hands down. students in those stands they'd love to get some more of that green powder on them here in the final 10 seconds of the first half. We've got plenty of face time here tonight for some of them quite green faces. Yeah that's that's your all star right there in the middle. <laughs> he knows it he's got a little bit of a Hulk look there. Earlier you see him running his fingers through his hair and just seeing the kind of dust spray out. <laughs> All right, save it for this next play. Second down and goal. Boykin in the backfield. He will get his hands on the ball in a wildcat formation. Boykin, jump pass. Knocked away. They were looking for Bavoda. Bavoda says, throw it higher. I've got about seven inches on my man. This is a great play call. I mean, you got some deception. You put Boyk in the backfield, act like you're going to run the ball with them, step up, make that toss. And this is just an outstanding play by Larkin Hanselman, number four, doing a great job of realizing Side the coverage. Carry Grove. Hanselman stands 5'7. Bavoda at 6'5. That is a tremendous play that takes such discipline. I mean, the deception on the play, you have Miles Boykin in the backfield running the Wildcat. You assume they're going to run the football. And to be disciplined enough to stay with his man and to make a play on that ball. Huge play by Hanselman. It's third and goal. Seven seconds left, first half. And there will be time for one more play. Brad Seberg looks on. You're this close in the end zone. I think this is an opportunity that you have to give the ball a chance. You have to give him a chance. I mean, you have a target target like Miles Boykin. I mean, six foot five, six foot six. You can see him kind of pulling at himself like he's the kind of receiver. You just need to get the ball around him. I and mean, he's six foot five or six foot six. But also, we're not even including his reach. I mean, he's got such a height advantage on these Cary Grove defenders. You can just toss the ball up and get the ball around him. Give him a chance to make the play. Providence will look for points. The kicker is Justin Hunniford. And he will put it through. So the final play of the half is a field goal, and Providence cuts the lead to 14 10. Does that surprise you that they went for three rather than an opportunity for seven? I don't think so. You know, I think it was Kerry Grove had really got stout on defense. They tried a few different things. I think it was important to just put some points on the board. It was a good decision by Providence. Make sure you get some points on the board be before half. Come back in, make your adjustments. And they will get the ball to start the second half, so I'm sure that weighed into that decision as well. For sure. You can tell he thought of that before. I mean, it could have been an opportunity. You would have risked it, had a chance to go back to Boykin. But they ran, they ran some plays. They were in the red zone there. It was a good, a good call, good choice, putting points on the board in that moment. You know you're going to go in a half, make your adjustments, receive the football. Well, the one thing we have seen here in this first half is if your team has the ball, you've got a chance to score. They've taken it the distance. Let's go down to Kelly Kroll. Thanks, guys, here with Coach Brad Seberg. First of all, Providence, a big game there, but for your team defensively to make that stop and just allow a field goal, how big was that heading into the half to be up still? That was big. You know, we would have preferred to have no score, and but uh, but that penalty gave them the extra 15 yards, and our defense did a great job of stopping them there and forcing the coach to make a tough decision. I think he made the right one. Well, earlier this week, you told us Jason Gregoire, a very smart kid, typically gets you guys in the right spot. Spot and he got you in the end zone twice already today. What is it he's seeing that's working for your team? Well, they're really concentrating on Tyler as they should be, and Tyler's playing a great game, and, and uh, Jason's making some nice reads and, and making some nice decisions. I know a lot of that has to do with the offensive line. You gave so much props to as well, but your message as you head into half for them to come out as a victorious team. I think we got to keep playing relentlessly, and, you know, I think our kids are competing well. Providence's kids are competing well, and, uh, you know, it's a 7A state championship game, and, uh, you know, let's have that in the second half. All right, best of luck, Coach. Thank you. All right, thank you. Dave, up to you. Thank you very much, Kelly. These two teams playing like champions, looking for the title here in 2014.
Warfield a touchdown, Gregoire two touchdowns, and Justin Hunterford the field goal. We go to our break, a 14-10 lead for the Cary Grove Trojans. And welcome back to Memorial Stadium at the half. It is Cary Grove, the Trojans, with a 14-10 lead on the Providence Catholic Celtics in our Class 7A state championship. Full day of football, mostly in the books. We still have one more to go, but state champions crowned in our first two games. Sacred Heart Griffin winning back-to-back -back state championships. They did it in 05 and 06. They do it again here in 2013 and 2014. And Nazareth winning its first ever state championship. The fourth first-timer to win a state championship here in Champaign this weekend. And then our game later on tonight featuring Stevenson and Homewood Flossmore in Class 8A. Welcome into Memorial Stadium. We're at the half again and Kerry Grove looking good on the running attack. That triple option has eaten up a lot of the clock and 22 consecutive plays right before that touchdown to make things 14 to 7 and Kerry or rather Providence able to go back down the other way and they were able to squeeze three out of it. The late uh, field goal as time expired in the first half. Our 8A game is going to be very interesting. The backstory with that one a little bit complicated. You you see, Stevenson and Homewood Flossmore got together in week two. And on that Friday night, we all had all sorts of weather all, all around northern Illinois. And so Stevenson went down to Flossmore. That's a long bus ride on a Friday night using the old tri-state. And they sat there and they waited and they waited. And at 9 o'clock, as the weather was clearing up, they called off the game. And the issue was the security in the area, because of a town festival, they did not have enough police to make sure that they were able to secure the game properly. So everybody got sent home. They turned around the next night, did it all over again. That long bus ride once again. Stevenson found themselves down by two touchdowns. They ended up winning that game in week number two en route to a 13-0 perfect season so far. The Patriots, they have never won a state championship. That's the one missing piece to their football puzzle, and they're going to try and win that tonight. Omar Flossmore has something to say about it, trying to win their first state championship in 20 years. That's our Class 8A game. Our 7A title still to decide. It is Kerry Grove with a 14 to 10 lead on Providence here at the break. We'll be back. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium. No surprises here, 14-10. We knew it would be close. Kerry Grove on top of Providence Catholic. Top seeded team in each part of their respective brackets and the number one and two teams in the state. Welcome back everybody along with NFL veteran Boomer Grigsby. I'm Dave Bernhard and Boomer we came into this game you and I were so anxious to get to this game 14 10 at the half and nothing has surprised me. This is an outstanding football game. I mean both teams doing doing everything very well. You know Providence needs to start. They need to have a little bit of a spark. I think the first half definitely goes to Kerry Grove other than the score. They just have such a demoralizing offense. I mean they just ground and pound. They eat up the clock their time of possession. Well, and that's something we did see, and we talked about it in the second quarter. A lot of times in the third quarter is when Kerry Grove has really been able to put away their opponents. But I thought on their second touchdown drive, you could see a little bit of fatigue on Providence's defense. Well, and that's what will happen. You know, I mean, Kerry Grove just so explosive, so powerful up front. You know, run the ball to Pennington over and over again. Then Greg Waugh making good decisions to, to keep the ball here, running the midline, keeping it, bringing it up the middle, scoring this touchdown. Providence. Hunterford has done a great job and you see Warfield going in for the touchdown. That tied the ball game at seven then late in the half Miles Boykin didn't the, get the ball and this is the opportunity where I feel like they missed. We talked about it earlier they need to go to Boykin. You can see him pointing to himself. That was a third down situation. I just believe you need to loft the ball up. You need to give him a chance to go up and get it. Make it a jump ball scenario. He has such a height advantage. But I think they made the right decision by electing to kick the field goal to put points on the board, go in at half, make your adjustments, and keep the momentum somewhat in your favor. Kerry Grove with 178 total yards. They've only thrown one pass tonight, and in fact, that led to a turnover. There's a completed pass, but then the fumble set up Providence's first touchdown drive. And the other side, Providence Catholic has not had the ball as much. They have 116 yards and are being out first downed, if you will, by Kerry Grove at that 12-7 number. Well, another way that Kerry Grove is so hard to play football against as you have the talent Providence has so many weapons but if they don't have any time of possession in order to utilize these weapons it makes it very difficult I mean with Kerry Grove eating the clock up it makes it very difficult to have any opportunity to throw the ball to Miles Boykin well in that second quarter Providence was going against the wind they'll get their hands on the ball once again to start the third quarter have you seen it any factor that the wind may have and I know Kerry Grove not for Kerry Grove they just run no matter whether there's a hurricane but for Providence in the second quarter well the wind could have been a factor but it, they didn't take any shots very down the field they did a good job of keeping the throws short they were throwing to the flats trying to make some slant routes and then keeping the ball on the ground 
And defensively for Kerry Grove. Again, we talk offenses all the time, but defensively for the Trojans, they hold a high-powered offense to a touchdown and a field goal. That's it. That's going to win you some ball games. It's a very tough defense. I mean, they're playing this three-man front, but you got guys like Rulin, you got guys like Gomez who are so disruptive and so powerful, and then a very scrappy secondary. Well, we are getting set for the second half. We've been talking about it all during the break. We can't wait for the final two quarters. They are loving it. Providence Catholic Celtic fans, a lot of green over there. We'll be back. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium in Champaign. Our 7A game at halftime, about to start the second half. The roller coaster ride for the Cary Grove students. They're into it. A 14 to 10 lead in a rematch of the 09 6A title. 5A and 6A earlier in the day. That matchup and both of those matchups. They're state champions for Sacred Heart Griffith and for Nazareth in 6A. And we'll have Stevenson and Homeland Flossmoor coming up. Our second half is next. Our distant top coat, it's nice and warm, 50 degrees in Champaign. We're loving it with a 14 to 10 lead for Kerry Grove at the break. Kerry Grove, the perfect 13-0 record on top of Providence Catholic. The Celtics 12-1 winners of the Catholic League Blue. Of course, Kerry Grove out of the Fox Valley Conference. And Boomer, you take a look at the defense again for Kerry Grove. The most points they allowed all season was in their first game. They get allowed 28 to Wheaton North. But seven games, seven of 13 games, they've allowed a touchdown or less. So difficult. And they have so much speed in the secondary. But talked a lot about their line having that unique different defense instead of doing a normal 3-3 type defense that you're seeing a lot at the high school level having the ability to run more of a 3-2 and they just have so many defensive backs that are that are powerful guys they're scrappy they're very tough they they're, they're definitely not tall they don't have a height advantage on anybody they're not they're not going to win a fight probably not going to be able to get on very many roller coasters but at the same time <laughs> they play with a tremendous amount of heart and the way that they swarm to the football and it's been interesting you watch them through the playoffs you know these guys make plays on the ball when the ball's in the air they go for it Let's go down on the field with Garrett Wolf. I have Providence Catholic head coach with me, Coach Mark Cardenese. Coach, what was the message going in at halftime? Well, you know, we got to make a stop on defense. Uh, you know, we're confident our offense can score points, but uh, we got to get them the ball. On offense, everyone knows about Miles Boykin and your quarterback. Miles at this point has two catches for 10 yards. Is there any plans to get him more involved to help to take over this game? Well, yeah, you know, we feel we got to take some shots with him. We got we to throw it deep, and you might see a little bit of that second half. Well, good luck in the seven ha second half. Thank you. All right. All right, thank you very much, Garrett. So there's a little tip for us that uh, Miles Boykin may get the ball a little bit downfield here. That's a good decision. I mean, we talk about they have to go to him. They have to find a way. And it doesn't necessarily have to be on all go routes. I mean, there's a lot of different options of, giving, of getting him open. And when you have a quarterback that has the precision that Hennifer does, I mean, you have so many different variations of routes that you can run to try to get him the ball. It doesn't necessarily have to be just lining them up single side and throwing the ball up and giving the Hail Mary catch. Now we talk about for Kerry Grove, we've talked about how they wear down opponents by the time they get in the third quarter. The Trojans play three or four people both ways. But on the flip side of that, for Kerry Grove this year, they have dominated their opposition. They've not necessarily had to play both ways for four quarters, and obviously not against a team the quality of Providence Catholic. And, and they, they have studs. They have powerful guys. I mean, with Gomez and Rulin, I mean, it, it's so difficult to withstand that kind of pounding, that kind of pressure, the consistent run game of just ground and pound. I mean, tremendous down blocks and their explosion off the line. It really starts to wear on a defense. We've seen throughout the season that the third quarter is when they really start to separate themselves. Defenses are a little bit worn down, and it's difficult to handle guys like that. And even though those guys are playing both ways, Rulin and Gomez, it doesn't appear that they're it doesn't appear that they've had any trouble with fuel in their tanks. They just continue to dominate for all four quarters of football on both sides of the ball. See Miles Boykin, number 81. You see that uh, cast around his little finger. Looks like he has his little finger and his ring finger taped together. He dislocated that left pinky finger against St. Rita, and that was in the second round of the playoffs. He sat out the quarterfinal game. In fact, when he came to, the, came to the semifinals, his mom reminded him what he had at stake in the future. Obviously, a playing career at Notre Dame. But Miles said, I'm not worried about the future. I am worried about right now. And all he did in that semifinal game was come out and had a big performance against Mount Carmel in the win against the caravan to get them to this point. And so for Miles Boykin and Justin Hunterford and all the other seniors for Providence Catholic, their motto again, quest for X. X being the Roman numeral for 10. It would be the 10th state championship and the 10th year since they last did that. 
It shows a lot of heart. It shows a lot of character. You know, I mean, he wants to be on the field. He wants to be able to make an impact for his school and for his teammates. And you know, nothing's going to stop. He's, he's going to going to a place like Notre Dame to play football. You know, he's the kind of player that has the intangibles. He has the athletic ability. You're never going to be able to keep a kid out of a game due to a finger. I mean, they could remove his finger and he'd still be a very <laughs> special player. Providence get their hands on the ball first and again no chances but great field position for the Celtics. They'll be going against the wind starting at their own 41. Well, Kerry Grove going back to that sky kick the interference call earlier actually because the ball never touched the ground. A lot of times when you see those short kicks like that the kicker will kick the ball into the ground. The ball will touch the ground first and go up and then a Kerry Grove player can make a play on the ball but because they're sky kicking it the Kerry Grove player was the first player to come underneath it and put his hands on the ball it was the reason for the interference on the on the kickoff before. Three receivers to the wide side of the field Warfield will join them. Richie Warfield cannot hang on Warfield in the first half rushed 10 times for 28 yards he also caught five balls for 34 Justin Hunterford 11 of 14 for 80 yards and as you just heard Garrett Wolf mentioned Miles Boykin just two catches for 10 yards on the other side Tyler Pennington 10 rushes for 85 yards two touchdown runs for the quarterback Jason Gregoire. It was a good thought trying to swing the ball out to Warfield in the flat and have the receivers block for him and just try to look up field a little bit too quickly rather than ensuring that he caught the ball first four yards it will be third down and six I'm looking to get the ball in the hands of Warfield there's number 39 Tyler Pennington one of those two way players. Justin Hunterford as a freshman his this senior class as freshman did not win a conference game they were blown out in several of them. And here they are as seniors playing for a state championship. Good block out in front of Warfield and Richie Warfield will carry it across midfield on a first down. Seven yards for Warfield. Good job by Providence running some motion here to get a little bit of penetration, get the ball out to Warfield, but he does a good job getting off that initial contact back there. Running the screen, get the ball to Warfield, makes a good job cutting up field. So just like that one minute into the third quarter the high short kick and a first down Providence and Cary Grove territory. Orfield needs a block to get to the corner. And there's the pursuit from that Trojan defense. So impressive about their defense is like we said we're talking about them playing this three two six a lot of these guys that you're seeing coming to the picture are coming from eight to ten yards off the ball. Warfield comes up here but you see he's forced outside by Pennington and here come the white hats all from the secondary. Five yards on that first down play. A little counter to Warfield. And the sophomore getting some time. It's a battle of sophomore running backs here tonight. Another first down after that seven yard run. Another special player. You can see Providence having a lot of faith in him, just eating up some clock themselves here, keeping the ball on the ground, trusting it to Warfield. Kind of run a little sprint draw here. They try to sprint to the right. Warfield takes a step, comes back on the draw, and just such a powerful, hard runner. Time, sideline, and too much. Intended receiver was Matt McNabb. Unusual there. We've seen Hunter for playing his feet a little bit more. It's the hustled that throw just a little bit. Usually you don't see the accuracy off by that much. The wind right now. Well, 20 miles per hour right in Hunterford's face. Now, of course, playing here at Memorial Stadium, it isn't necessarily blowing directly in his face, but we have seen the wind impact play here today. Hunterford positive yardage. Hunterford this year rushed for 235 yards, a couple of touchdowns. He picks up eight on that carry. Celtics back to the line fairly quickly. It's interesting how they vary the pace at times. 
these teams will change up the tempo there. And really what that does is if you, if you do the no huddle, it's simply a means of communication, but it doesn't allow the defense to change any personnel. Great coverage on the play. One of the men involved for 31, Travis Meyerson. These Cary Grove secondary is just so impressive with how the, this is zone coverage. But a lot of times in high school football, guys will just drop to space. They'll cover grass. They won't cover anything. So to be cognizant of what's going on around you and be aware of where the wide receiver is and to make sure that you're defending routes instead of just grass. A great job there. And that breakup forces a fourth down. Fourth and two. Nate Boboda. 17 yard pickup on fourth down and two. Great job by Boboda here. Hunterberg drops back. He's going through his read progression. He puts a lot of velocity on this ball. Boboda does a good job of using his hands to make the catch. There's a lot of heat on this ball. Boboda does a good job reaching out. You see, catching the ball with both of his hands. You see, he's still hurting a little bit in his knee, but he's out there playing, trying to make a difference. Hunterford with the patience once again to Boboda. Inside the five yard line, close to the first down. See Boboda limping there, but he's making such an impact on this drive. Hunterford drops back, and what's beautiful about this is you see his eyes. He started with the left going through his progression and then caught Boboda on the shallow route running across. Put some more zip on that ball. Boboda doing another good job catching the ball with his hands. After that nine yard pickup, it's second down and a yard to go for the five. Warfield has a short touchdown run, and he will get his second. There's a flag at the end of this play. Great job by Warfield, though. Navigating once through the traffic, a patient runner. You see his hand on the back of the offensive lineman. Helmet came off, so he has to leave the field. Warfield's touchdown run of five yards will give Providence the lead. We have a touchdown after the score. Face mask on the defense. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Providence scoring a field goal with no time remaining in the first half to narrow the margin to 14 to 10. They take this kickoff to start the third quarter. They take it all the way down for the score. And now P.J. Kowalkowski looking for that all-important extra point to make this a three-point game. 17-14 lead for Providence Catholic. Mark Coglanese looks at that board. It's the second time the Celtics have led tonight. It's the second time Richie Warfield has found the end zone. Warfield the score, Providence the lead. Dave Bernhardt along with Boomer Grigsby back at Memorial Stadium where those folks are a pretty happy bunch right now. They just picked up a touchdown and Boomer you look back to the final play of the first half a field goal some people may have questioned why not go for a short touchdown on fourth down but the field goal looks pretty big right now especially with what just happened. It was a great decision by Cat by Catholic to kick that field goal coming in knowing they're going to receive the ball. Here's the list of the last 7A champions last year Mount Carmel defeating Lake Zurich 30 to nothing in this championship ball game and we got some powerhouses right there Glenbard West Boylan of course back to back years for Wheaton Warrenville South it was Providence's win over Wheaton Warrenville South they did that without Miles Boykin 23 to 6 win set up the showdown with Mount Carmel. It was one of their more impressive wins especially defensively they've they done a great job on defense without Boykin in the game you know the offense really struggled but they did a great job defensively creating some turnovers against Wheaton Warrenville even scoring on a pick six and caused the safety they just did a lot of things well in order to help the offense the offense was starting to struggle so another side of the team picked it up and that's what that's what it takes in order to get to the state finals a lot of times you just can't ride one segment of the game there's going to be times in the season where one starts to falter and you need the other to pick up. So that penalty, the impact is that Kerry Grove will start from their own 20. 
Trojans touchdown drives today of 75 and 67 yards. And now play from three points behind. Providence has scored 10 points since the last time Terry Grove had the ball, but here's Pennington. He'll rumble for 15 or 16 right up the middle. Tyler Pennington taking this handoff and just watch how he lowers this shoulder. Such a powerful runner coming through the hole. He's kind of bulldozing his way through and right here on the very end, lowering that shoulder. Well, as you mentioned, I think on his first carry of the game, he runs with his shoulders low as it is. A lot of strength in those legs. Quick first down. Oh, and you can hear the pads. And Pennington initiates the contact. So impressive for only a sophomore. Just the way that he runs with the football. Once again, the line doing a great job here, sealing that off. You get a little bit of a kick out block, but he finds that little opening. But once he gets to second level, he already has his shoulders down. You'll see a lot of guys that run tall. And he'll run bent over like that with both shoulder, both hands on the ball to ensure the ball security. He keeps those legs driving. He's always falling forward for another additional yard or two. He picks up seven on first down. Somehow Pennington is able to <laughs> squirm, twist, and then power through a hole. That's also what's impressive about it. I mean, the way that he runs with both hands on the ball and shoulders down, you know, normally that is more of a bulldozing style. It's more straight ahead. But he, he has this crafty way of, of navigating through some traffic piles. So even though that wasn't a big run, he somehow found a way for the first down. He's already over 100 yards on 22 carries, averaging over five yards per carry. Gregoire, who has a couple of touchdown runs, stopped after a gain of two. The yardage numbers dramatically different in terms of how they're getting there. Kerry Grove now with 191 yards rushing, compared to just 14 passing. On the other side, Providence Catholic, 64 yards in the ground and 111 in the air. I'm trying to run the midline here, and Providence does a good job with Brendan O'Hara and Sharkey coming down from the linebacker position to make that play at the line of scrimmage. Pennington will get across midfield. It will be third and about five. And not been a lot of situations where Kerry Grove has been forced to third and long. We'll see what they go to here. Being in a third and five situation. Trojans one of four on third down. They've been perfect in their two fourth down conversion attempts. They'll option the right side. Providence strings it out and it's tackle for a loss. On the carry, Kevin Hughes, number six, is Brendan O'Hara for Providence. Brendan O'Hara does a great job here, and you can tell by the alignment of, of the backs in the backfield. He was a little bit wider than normal, a little bit of dis, mis, or deception, faking the handoff, pitching the ball out, and O'Hara does a great job of coming down and making that play. Harry Grove will look to punt. They do not punt often. For reasons you have seen tonight. Mark and Hanselman, the rugby style kick. Inside the 10 yard line, trouble. A break for the Celtics, Mike Madej is able to come up with it. 47 yard kick. Providence will start from her own three yard line. This could have been disastrous for the Celtics. Timeout. Television timeout. We've already crossed, crossed through the midpoint of the third quarter. Providence will have the ball in a 17 14 lead, but they will have to start at their own three yard line. Mike Madej, who had a 90 yard punt return for a touchdown to spark the victory over St. Rita in the second round of the playoffs. Well, he was looking for maybe another 90 yarder, and then things kind of turned tough for Madej. There is Mike Madej, his man that was right on top of him, George Harkey. Harkey was flying down the field using his 4 5 speed in the 40. He was in that position where he's trying to make a play. Sometimes you can try to do a little bit too much. At the time he should have let that ball just go in the end zone and take the touchback. He's in that judgment period where he sees, you know, Kerry Grove guys running downfield. Right. 
Warfield just gets out of there and at the bottom of that tackle right there is Michael Gomez. Gomez, six foot, 260 pound senior, the emotional leader on this team. Watch him come through. He's all the way outside on the left end position. The guard and tackle pull and he just takes a great angle and rips through the block to, by Vavoda to make that play. Saw that wrestling move from Gomez. Gave up wrestling for a year. He'd been wrestling, gave it up for a year, and now he's back at it. I think some of these defensive tackles so deadly when they're wrestlers, they have to have such great hands in wrestling. Deep near sideline for Blanket on the shoulder catch. What a throw. What a throw. Very impressive throw by Hunterford. 38 yards to Miles Boykin. The great throw and a great over the shoulder grab by the Champagne News Gazette's Player of the Year in Illinois. I mean, he is feeling pressure. Gomez goes through the line through two guys, but a perfectly thrown ball, upper outer shoulder. Miles Boykin. He got past Zach McQuaid and breathing room for Providence with the three point lead. Great cut by Warfield, but the defense finds him after a pickup of five. Well, that shows the speed of Kerry Grove because when Warfield makes this cut, there's some room right there. And white jerseys show up. Well, you have a successful pass down the field like that. It has to change the coverage area. You know, opens up the middle of the field a little bit for Catholic. It's something they need to do. They need to be able to go back and forth like that because they have weapons with Boykin and also having Warfield in the backfield. Hunterford didn't like what he saw. Yeah, rid of that one in a hurry. And a penalty, that may be a grounded call. That happened fast. You see Hunterford, he's he pointing to the official. Oh, was there a flag? No. No penalty. Trying to run the screen here. Pennington reads it right away. You can see him all over Warfield. Great job by Tyler Pennington. Recognizes the screen immediately. Just runs right alongside Warfield. Terry Grove says no catch. Our officials say it is good. And Nate Favota with yet another reception. Boy, that's good hands for the tight end, Favota. Well, there's a lot of heat on this ball. Did a great job by Favota there. We talked about it earlier. He was catching the ball with his hands. But watch how he goes that low for this one. Strong enough in the fingers to keep that ball from hitting the turf. Boy, that was, those are strong fingers. Now Vavoda will split out. First down for Providence on the move. Hunterford, a lot of room to run if he wants it. He gets one big block out there. And it was Vavoda with the big block. And now Kerry Grove may be flagged here. The Providence sideline erupted first for the block and second for the penalty flag. And here comes Trevor Ruland off the field. At the end of the play, personal foul, defense, 57. 15 yard penalty, reserved for the first down. Well, boy, this is the kind of stuff that makes the chirping is start a little bit makes people start playing more aggressive. You see Hunterford roll out here and Bavoda does a great job coming back on the crack block on Tyler Pennington. You see Trevor Ruland comes in here at the very end. I'm not sure if he's seen that whole play and probably thought that it was a late hit on his own player and these offensive linemen even though he's on defense right now are very loyal and very defensive of their backs comes in there and just too aggressive. Raymond DiMatteo also with a little bit of a shove on a Providence player. But after that 15 yard walk off Providence the ball inside the Cary Grove 30. The crack block could have been Time so out. much worse. You could see at the very Time last second Pennington kind of caught eye of it. It was good that he had his eye on a swivel because Vavoda still delivered an outstanding crack block on him. But that could have been a lot more vicious. 
Here's a look back at that last play. There's Pennington, number 39. See Bavota come in here, but Pennington sees him right there, and he can start to brace himself, but he just can't brace himself enough. And you can see Trevor Rulin coming here, number 57. Kind of shoves him out the way. Yeah. <laughs> Rulin shoved aside his teammate Raven DiMatteo and said, I'd like a piece of number 84, Nate Bavoda. It's an aggressive play. He's just got to be a little bit more heady in that in that instance. Realize that you need to stop, gather yourself, take that punishment out on the next play in between the whistles. Providence took the lead in the third quarter on a five-yard touchdown run from Richie Warfield. That finished off an 11-play, 59-yard drive, 3.03 on the time clock. Let's go down to Kelly Kroll game about Trevor Rulin and what he means to this team a three year starter certainly coach Sieber will miss him that season but he's following in his dad's footsteps Matt who actually played at Iowa in the early 90s and for the last three seasons he's been here helping out the offensive line and I would bet he might have been in his son's ear just then letting <laughs> him know that that might not be the best way to handle things. <laughs> Thanks Kelly. To the near side. Great pursuit again, Travis Meyerson. He's been all over the field tonight for Kerry Grove. That time it was Mike Markasovic with the carry. Michael Gomez, number 67. Here's Markasovic. They like to run this jet sweep. Markasovic had a little look that he may want to throw the ball. Well, you can see they've, they've, they've done that earlier in the playoffs with Miles Boykin handing the ball off to him on a jet sweep where he threw the ball downfield. But it was still great pursuit by Meyerson to come through there and make that tackle. Ooh, George Hartke, number 34, a half a step sooner, and that could have gone 70 yards the other way. Harkey, the twin brother of Willie Harkey, they both play in the secondary for the Trojans. They're trying to throw the bubble screen here to Warfield, and Harkey just does a great job immediately taking that angle, beating Vavoda on the block, almost coming through for the interception. There would have been no one there to stop him. Big third down, third and eight. Nice catch by Warfield, he'll stretch. That should be enough for the first down. Tough catch by Richie Warfield. Had to take it off his back hip. They needed eight yards. They pick up nine. This is so difficult. Hooper does a good, he's running the out route here. But to catch that ball behind him, and there's a lot of velocity on this ball too. To be able to reach back. The athleticism that that takes in the focus to catch that ball with your hands behind you being thrown at that velocity. Great play by Warfield. Once again, Providence Catholic in the red zone. Hunterford to the 12. Justin Hunterford, the ball carrier. Tackled by Alex Pittenberg. Hunterford looking around in the pocket, decides to take a run for it, but once again, great pursuit. We're looking for Miles Boykin. Tyner Leach all over him. Leach, one of the bigger defensive backs at six feet tall. It's interesting when you see that matchup, though, that one on one, that's still something that Providence going to see that, maybe go back to that, throw that ball to Boykin later. It's the kind of matchup that you want, is him on a one on one. And they go right back to the ground here. And a first down for Warfield. Another first down and goal. Providence has scored the last three times they have had the ball. A field goal to close out the first half. A Richie Warfield touchdown run three minutes into the second half. But now first and goal from the five. Hunterford with some room. And that little hesitation may have kept him from the end zone, but he has it down to the one. Second and goal from there. Just a little hesitation there. Once again, Kerry Grove coming in pursuit. Guys flying in from the secondary. Mark Cogliani says, let's go, let's go. They had the players spread out over the field. The play clock is still at 12. The Celtics are in their huddle. They have to hurry it up. We'll see what they do here. 
drive before half. They didn't go to Boykin when they had a chance to, but they're so close in a one-yard situation. They might just have some faith and hand the ball to Warfield again. And they are forced to take time a timeout. Out. So it was Providence Catholic second charge. A little bit of a delay there to start that play, and Hunterford looked at that play clock. He was down to one second, got the timeout, but very key here, Boomer, with a minute to play in the third quarter. Providence has already used up two timeouts. Well, they need to put some more points on the board here, and they're in a situation you know, being second down, you're a yard away. You know, they, they have a lot of options here. I mean, they can always throw the ball, throw the fade, throw the flag ball to Boykin, the back corner of the end zone. But Warfield's been such a strong runner. I think it's a safer play to just see if you can hand the ball off to him and punish it in for a yard or so. You look into that huddle there. There's a whole bunch of Providence coaches there who are Providence graduates. First of all, Matt Sentner. He's an assistant this year. Nine state titles for the Hall of Famer. His son, Luke's the offensive coordinator. He just asked his dad, hey, you want to come back and coach? And Matt Sempner says, indeed. Let's go down to Garrett Wolf. Here in the red zone, we have Miles Boyden, who's 6'4", 225. He's a, he's a rare talent. And many people said that they remind him of Brandon Marshall. This is the area where you need to get him the ball. There's a matchup out here that he can't handle. And with him having that size, he can take over the game at any time. He may look to do that right here on second and goal. On the ground to Warfield. His third touchdown run of the night. And a 23-14 Providence Catholic lead. Good decision. I mean, they've been riding Warfield. He's a powerful back. That time they ran their three back heavy look. You can see the guard and tackle pull around. Warfield does a good. It was just a safer bet. More things can go wrong when you risk throwing the ball up in the air. It would have been a little bit different. Out a little further from the end zone, but you're looking at second down, one yard to go. Got a lot of confidence in their sophomore superstar. Hand in the ball, and he finds the end zone. Kolakowski, perfect on the night. Providence, who at one time. Trailed 14-7. They have scored the last 17 points. They have done it on their last three possessions, up by 10 in the final minute of the third quarter. Richie Warfield's numbers. He's been a workhorse tonight. 25 times he's touched the ball. 18 running, seven catching, over 100 yards of total offense to go along with the three Providence touchdowns. That drive. 13 plays, 92 yards. The key play in that sequence, that 38-yard pass to Miles Boykin, it took just under five minutes to go the distance. Providence a really good job on that drive, kind of spreading the field. Went to the weapons early, brought the ball out wide, took a shot deep to Boykin, brought the ball back inside. Just kind of utilized, very diversified the playbook there on that, on that drive. It was very successful doing it, sustained a long one. We have a minute to play here in the third quarter. We're in the first half. Kerry Grove dominating time of possession here. Providence Catholic has had the ball seven minutes and 57 seconds of this period, and they have used it to their advantage, scoring two touchdowns. A little bit of room momentarily for Willie Hartke. And now Kerry Grove in the position after that 18 yard return. Kerry Grove in the position of having to play catch up. And that's because the Celtics, they have dominated here in the second half. Second half, all problems. Hand the ball to Warfield there, running the ball inside, makes a good cut, find his way through. And once again here, pulling the guard to tackle. The sophomore follows him through into the end zone. Gary Grove by this time in most of their 13 games this year, they had been dominating people so much that their starters have not even been playing at this juncture of the ball game. Now they're chasing 10 points. Three yard pickup for Pennington on first down. Trojans about four yards short of a first down. 
But this second quarter belonged to Providence. This third quarter has belonged to Providence. The second quarter, the Celtics closed within 14-10. Tyler Pennington will bring his team to the sidelines. Down by 10 in the 7-8 championship game. A rematch of 2009. What Gary Grove beat Providence. The IHSA championships are proudly presented by Country Financial. For your auto, home, life, business, and retirement needs, call the Country Financial representative near you. Grow your own way. It is a 24-14 lead for Providence Catholic over Cary Grove as we take you into Memorial Stadium on the campus of the University of Illinois in Champaign. 7-8 championship football. We begin the fourth quarter. Tyler Pennington, the carry. He should have enough for the first down. This is not an offense that necessarily can strike quickly. They will grind you to death. And again, Providence had the ball for almost eight minutes of that third quarter. You can see they're, they're not no huddling. They're not hurrying back to the line yet. They're, they're patient. They're confident they can get this drive moving. Try to get some points on the board and see if they can use their defense to get the ball back. Providence, great job. A sharky there once again the middle linebacker coming downhill and making that tackle on Pennington. Now here's the other thing. Remember Providence went on a drive late in that second quarter led to a field goal. They got the ball to start the third quarter. Kerry Grove only had the ball for about three minutes in that third quarter. This Providence defense should be as well rested as they've been since the start of the game. And a unique thing. I mean a lot of times you see Kerry Grove has dominated the time of possession throughout this season. So Providence is ready to play and they have a lead here in the fourth quarter. Gregoire stopped short after a couple of yard pickup. Let's check in with Kelly Kroll. For the Trojans. On the pitch. Close. And that should be enough for Kevin Hughes. 5'10, 155 pound junior. Look at this. They pitch the ball to Hughes, but really does a great job. Matt Sutherland, number 20. Look at that block that he has out there in the front. Using the other back. Gets rid of it as he's going down. Makes the pitch, but Sutherland does a good job blocking, leading out front. Helping Hughes get that yard for the first down. Inside the 45 yard line. Pennington always picks up that extra yard or two. We talked about a young man who takes a beating linebacker and then he comes back out and plays fullback. It's amazing when you see him, you see Gomez there, and a couple other guys who don't come off the field, and, and, and their performance does not go down at all. They still look just as powerful. I mean, you, you rarely even see them breathing heavy. The, the endurance that these guys have is, is truly incredible. Left side of the line has Michael Gomez, along with Trevor Rulin. That's where they run. Pennington. He is inside the 30. Here come the Trojans down by 10. 12 yard run for the sophomore. I'll say how he makes this adjustment. I mean, you can see Brulin just how he was dominating that block there. Tyler Pennington plants that foot, step outside, then drives back downfield. Such a great job. I mean, you can see as he comes through the hole how his shoulder pads parallel to the ground. For Pennington, that is his 30th carry of the night. He has 141 yards. Brandon O'Hara, another great job. You see him come down from the linebacker position and make this play. Really, the play was made, but Emmett Trost does a great job of ripping through the line, coming underneath to spill that to O'Hara, the linebacker. It's a great combination they had there. With 
It's a 10 point Providence lead. The Celtics only outgaining Perry Grove 257 to 246. And the Trojans on the move. Another pass to Hanselman. And right there on the stop was number 15, Jack Pell. Remember, Hanselman on the first pass of the game for Perry Grove made the reception, fumbled. Providence went down to score the early touchdown. Textbook by Jack Pell. Watch the way he makes that break on the ball, then comes down, squares up his feet to make a great open field tackle. Perry Grove trying to throw that now pass, trying to get the ball out to Hanselman, a shifty guy in space. Perry Grove, three of seven and third down conversions. They need eight yards here. To the short side of the field. And no room there. Sutherland. He will be four yards short of the first down. Tyler Pennington, the sophomore, last year a 1,000 yard rusher. This year he came into this game with almost 1,700 yards. It's a big night right there. 30 carries for 143 yards. And once again, Providence doing a great job pursuing inside out. Daniel O'Hara again coming from the inside. Forced that ball out of bounds. Now you're looking at a big fourth down. Gregoire has it. And the drive will continue. The heady quarterback, Jason, Jason Gregoire, the senior, makes the right decision, but we have a penalty flag on the field. An eight yard run for Gregoire if it stands up. After the play, personal foul, defense, number six. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Brendan O'Hara, the personal foul penalty, as we said, he is the cousin of Larkin Hanselman for Kerry Grove. Oh, you can see it there. He just kind of lifts up his knee. Official walking in there. Got to be a little smarter than that, but a great job by Greg Waugh making a very senior decision there. First and goal, Trojans. Pennington straight up the middle. No one is stopping Tyler Pennington. Seven-yard touchdown run has made it a four-point game. And Tyler Pennington, nothing is going to keep him out of the end zone. You see him coming straight downhill. And just a horrible position for the safety to be in when you got a guy like Pennington just kind of on a beeline in the end zone. And don't be on the tracks when a train's coming through. Tyler Pennington just barreling through into the end zone. Colin Walsh makes this a three point game. A 13 play, 65 yard drive. It took five minutes and 39 seconds, the last seven yards. Pennington not to be denied. This has been worth every moment you have spent with us tonight on Comcast Sportsnet. Your 7A championship game. Providence on top, 24-21. Perry Grove comes right back. They march 13 plays in 5 minutes and 39 seconds. Showed a great deal of patience. And tonight, we have had six touchdown drives. And those drives have been 11 plays, 10 plays, 14, 11, 13, and 13 plays leading to touchdowns. And the most important possession of this game will be coming up following this kickoff. Go a little bit deeper with the kick this time. Warfield has it, not much room to run, and Providence has started their own 30 after the seven yard return. It's a great football game here. We'll see what Providence is going to do. Come out. They got a lead here, but still have so many weapons. Here's Justin Hunterford's numbers. 
and is just about on his completion percentage the season. He'll be up under center. Play action. On the run. His favorite receiver tonight, not Miles Boykin, not the tall Miles Boykin, but the tall Nate Pavoda. 19 yards and a first down on first down. Well executed play. Run a little play action rolling out here. You see they bring a running back across and run a shallow crosser behind him, hoping to bring that Cary Grove defender up on the shallow crosser and be able to reach Pavoda behind him. Well executed play rolling out there. Very quickly, Providence in midfield. Conifer's able to scoot forward for about seven. An eye on that clock approaching the six minute mark here in this fourth quarter. In 2009, Harry Grove defeated Providence 34 17. That was in the 6A championship game. We are in 7A right now. Warfield still his feet. It's out of it. The fourth touchdown run of the night from Richie Warfield goes for 44 yards. Great job here, Richie Warfield. He's run a little counter. He steps to the left. He follows the lineman through, and, and that's just athleticism and power there. Breaks two tackles, the kind of guy you have to wrap up. Kerry Grove's been very good all game long. Welcome to Trevor Rowland right there. Pushes off another guy. No one's going to catch him. A great job by Warfield. After all those long drives, just a three play. And 70 yard drive. Dead ball. Ball start on the center. Replay the try. There's so many great players on this field for both teams. It's so important to ensure that you wrap up every play. And all game long, Kerry Grove has done a tremendous job of swarming to the football. The Warfield just kind of sliced through there. And once he got through that Trevor Rulin missed tackle to the next level and spins off, only one guy in an arm tackle is not going to bring down Warfield. Six foot, 200 pounder, Kowalkowski, the extra point. And the margin increases back to 10. See this touchdown again. You see it in that break that he makes in the counter action. Missed tackle right there past the line of scrimmage and spins off the defensive back and just a foot race down the sideline. Great job by Warfield. Richie Warfield with that touchdown run now has the Class 7A championship game record of 24 points. Top the 18 scored by Jared Dahl from Prospect. See all of his teammates over there congratulating him. Warfield, you will find out following the ball game that he also has set the 7A record for most touchdowns in the game with four. More importantly, he will look at that board and see a 10 point lead with 6.05 to play. Again, it's very unusual for a player to play freshman ball as a freshman and then jump to varsity his sophomore year, skipping over that sophomore level. But very quickly, his teammates said, I think it's going to work out just fine. I tell you what, I'm willing to bet if you got your hands on that freshman film that it would make a significant highlight reel for a kid that make <laughs> that kind of an impact and then jump up and be this much of a difference maker at this level with such a great program like Providence and there's so many athletes on the field. Terry Grove needs a big return. And Willie Hartke will get it out just beyond the 20 and so the Trojans 80 yards and six minutes 19 yard return by Hartke. Carrie Grove is in uncharted waters here. During the return, block in the back. Receiving team, 61. You take a penalty on top of it to push him back, make this field a little bit longer. They're going to have to throw the football a little bit 
most likely, but this is not a big come from behind football team. Uncharted waters for them. They're normally always ahead, consistently dominating throughout the second half of all their opponents. So Providence can play a little bit safer. They're prepared for that. They can play a little bit more cover two, cover four zone. They can prepare for Gary Grove taking the shot. They don't have to be as stout up front. 31 points allowed by Kerry Grove. The most they have given up this season. A previous high came in their first game when they gave up 28 to Wheaton North. Luis Vasquez on the stop of Gregoire. Now, if you look back, I mean, obviously, there's 90 yards to go for a score. The last touchdown drive covered 65 yards for Kerry Grove, but they used 5 minutes and 39 seconds, and that's exactly what we have left in this game. Going is tough for Pennington, and a flag tossed in the middle of that. Swarm tackle situation like that. A lot of times you see a face mask. Personal foul. Face mask. 50 on the defense. We're, we're on the eighth level here at Memorial Stadium. My partner, Homer Grigsby, officiating this game in addition to his analyst duties. Excellent work, my man. <laughs> Kind of just got to run the odds of it. Anytime there's seven defenders, Providence doing a great job on defense. You know, inadvertent face mask, but whenever there's that many, whenever there's that many defenders around the football, there's no offensive lineman where the flag comes in, you eliminate holding and all the other possibilities. Just aggressive play by Providence. But that helps the cause for the Trojans. Southern loaded. He gets sticked by Brendan wow. O'Hara. Brendan O'Hara, 6'2", 225, and just a junior. Providence coming with it on defense. O'Hara, you see number six here, takes that step and comes across from the other way. But the best part, how he delivers that hit, fires his hips and initiates the contact, driving the ball carrier back. He'll try it again this way. Sutherland, this time, it's Mike Madej with the tackle. <laughs> Providence playing great defense. See how he sunk, sinks his hips there, drives through to make the tackle in the very next play. Midday coming down. This is how you run. Once again, this is O'Hara making the same tackle. Gregoire to the air, going deep. Has his man complete at the 35-yard line. Larkin hands him in with the reception. That's what they needed. Gregoire pulling up, throwing in the double coverage, and Hanselman coming down with the catch. In traffic. Had a step on him. Ball was a little bit thrown behind him. A great job by Hanselman. Slowing down, jumping up, and trying to catch that ball. The highest point. Three yards, and it will use up time. Excellent play by Hanselman there. Had a step on the receivers, watching the ball in order to kind of stutter his feet, let the defensive backs go by and go up for that football so no one can get a hand on it. Four minutes left in this ball game. Kerry Grove, all three timeouts remaining. They need to get in the end zone quickly. Sutherland again, stopped by Jack Pell. Will be third down. Providence playing the fundamentals, sealing off everything in the triple option. They have a guy on the back, have a guy on the quarterback, have a guy on the pitch man. Pell coming up, settling his feet, making a good open field tackle. It will be fourth down. Kind of get nowhere to go. Providence is swarming at the line of scrimmage. Harry Grove, three of three on fourth down tonight. They better be four of four if they want to have any hope of winning this 7A title game. Fourth and one, but they're going to run behind their two big guys. Pennington has the first down. We'll stop the clock for a moment. 2.56 left. You go very confident they can get a yard. Anytime that you're going to hand the ball to Tyler Pennington, behind Nick Gomez and Trevor Ullum, and you see that surge they get, and the center does a tremendous job as well. Gregoire pumps, pulls it down. The intended receiver is Kevin Hughes. Yeah. 
because the timing of this play gets thrown off a little bit. He doesn't really get a chance to plant his feet. He does the pump fake, but never gets his feet really, really back down. Timing of that route, feeling a little bit of pressure from Providence. This one almost intercepted by Pell there on the end. Trojans down by 10. Looking to break Pennington through, enough for five yards. And remember, Trojans have all three timeouts remaining. They'd like to get into the end zone and then see what they can do with the kickoff. Well, not a successful putting the ball in the air, so they've got to try to get this in on the ground and try to put points on the board and then go for an onside kick. And Pennington. He spins off a man. That will be a first down inside the 10. First and goal. Tyler Pennington, the ball Locked carrier. Locked out with 2.20 left on an 11-yard run by Pennington. He's such a playmaker. As he lowers him shoulders there, absorbs some of that hit, and then rolls off of it and just continues to keep going downfield. The kind of plays they need out of him right now. You can see it. He's, he's sucking there. He's a little tired. Gregoire to keep it. Providence ready for him. For 95, Brendan Tracy will pull him back. Gregoire keeps it, and Brandon Tracy doing a good job. And you see O'Hare there and Sharkey. Linebackers doing a good job coming downhill. 174 yards for Pennington, 37 carries. Here's his 38. And he's two yards away from the end zone. Clock continuing to roll. They're just going to no huddle it and try to punch this ball in the end zone. Look at the ball's going to go left. You have Michael Gomez and Trevor Rulin. Pennington. And that young man is tired. He has carried the ball nearly 40 times tonight in addition to his linebacker duties. But Kerry Grove did exactly what they needed to do. They took it the length of the field. They're within four with 90 seconds to play. It's a gutsy call. It's good coaching here to have that kind of faith in your team. You thought they would have called a timeout in that situation or to gather himself and choose a play, but they have such faith in their offensive line in Pennington. Hand the ball to punch that ball in from one yard out. Looking for one to make this a field goal game. 31-28. That drive, 91 yards in 15 plays. Patient yet quick to use four minutes and 35 seconds. Pennington exhausted here. Try to give him a rest on this kickoff. It's been a complete workhorse for Kerry Grove. 39 carries for 180 yards and two touchdowns. And you can see the way that he runs the football. So, the 7A champions will be crowned here in 90 seconds, and that is the trophy they are looking to claim. Providence has nine of those big boys in their trophy case. Kerry Grove, their last one, their only one, came in 2009 when they defeated Providence Catholic. Twice, Kerry Grove has finished second in 2004, and then a couple of years ago, Providence second place three times. And so they're not going to have a chance to give him a blow. They're going to have to go for an onside kick, most likely, in this situation in order to try to get the ball back. And you need guys like him out there that can either make the hit on the ball or actually you see it or catch it himself. You need your athletes out there, and you need some headhunters. Now the new rules in high school football the fewest number of people you can put on one side of the ball this season is four. So you really can't stack one side with another. The rule put in for safety, but either way, in a situation like this, stacked or not, you are going to see some train wreck type collisions if this ball goes over into the thick of it. That takes a big hop. And Providence Catholic with Brendan O'Hara holding that ball high. Has just under 90 seconds to kill, but Kerry Grove can stop the clock three times. They have used no timeouts. Providence just one timeout remaining. Here's a look at it. Looked pretty good for a while. I'll tell you what, this is an impressive on sidekick the high school level. Brennan O'Hara does a great job of going up and catching that football.
Warfield, a short carry. And the first timeout time of the half called Kerry by Kerry Grove. Grove. First charge timeout. See the band aid that Warfield has on his helmet to hold that strap. Well, if you've enjoyed this one, get ready for our next one. We've 31 28 score here, but in 8A, you can see some real fireworks. Home with Blossmore taking on Stevenson, the Patriots, perfect through the season, number one team for most of the season. They will take on Homewood Flossmore. The Vikings, two losses this year, one coming to Stevenson, but in both of their losses, Homewood Flossmore had double digit leads before losing to Stevenson and Lincoln Way East. We've been waiting a couple of days to get to that one, and you'll get it next here on Comcast Sportsnet. See earlier on, Sacred Heart Griffin back to back state titles over Montini, 29 14, and then Nazareth Academy, 14 7 lead at the half. They stretched out to a 26 7 final. We are just a minute 24 away here, getting our 7 8 champion. See how Providence is going to come out here and try to go for a first down. It was, very, it was great coaching by Brad Seberg earlier. Kerry Grove got down the goal line to not use a timeout. Just hustle your offense in order to punch the ball in the end zone. Save all your timeouts for this defensive stand. Warfield, the first down carry. What a show we've had put on by the two sophomore running backs here tonight. A 14-yard pickup for Warfield, who scored four touchdowns this evening. Timeout. Kerry Grove. Second charge timeout. And now the clock really works against the Trojans. They will need a turnover. Great job by Providence. And that man right there, Warfield, he's staying consistent. He's been your playmaker all game long. He's the player that you trust the most. He's been the one performing to keep the ball in his hands, let the guy make a play. And that's exactly what he did. Coming through that line of scrimmage to get a first down. Warfield has rushed 21 times for 119 yards and four touchdowns. He's also been the favorite receiver of Justin Hunterford. Warfield with seven catches for 51 yards. Hunterford tonight, 18 of 26 for 184 yards. They give the ball to Richie Warfield on that last play. And for Mark Coglanis, that's a big one. Coach Cogs, as they call him, looking for his first state championship as a head coach. He was part of several state championships for Providence Catholic as an assistant under Matt Sempner, who is now an assistant for him. Warfield just sheds blockers. And Gary Grove forced to call their final timeout. Timeout. Kerry Grove, final charge timeout. We talked about Tyler Pennington, sophomore quarterback for Kerry Grove, a running back for Kerry Grove. How about the sophomore running back, Richie Warfield, for Providence Catholic? Powerful, explosive. He can do it all. Run the ball out of the backfield. They went to him in the flats. You see him barreling in the end zone on both of these for touchdowns. The third one for a touchdown. And 44 yards. Run a little bit of counter in the way that he broke free from Trevor Ruling right the line of scrimmage, spins off the defensive back, foot race to the end zone. Boy, how much of a backbreaker was that one for Kerry Grove? That they had just closed within three. Warfield's 44-yard run that you just saw made it a 10-point game. Yes, the Trojans came back, but now running out of time. It was the biggest run of the night for sure, and he made that happen. Our country financial player of the game, Richie Warfield, right now sitting at 119 yards on the ground and those four touchdowns. Harry Grove out of timeouts. Coming up on a minute to play as soon as that Ball is ready for play. The 25 second clock will start. And it does. And this can be taken down to about 20 seconds. About 30 seconds, rather. And they will use every bit of that clock. Providence has one timeout remaining. They will likely take it here as. <laughs> 
Pagladis making sure. Don't, now, don't let, don't walk away from me. Don't walk him down. No. <laughs> and that may be about the happiest timeout that Mark Pagladis has ever taken. Getting the ice bucket ready. Well, Trying to find one that yeah, has what, the most in it. We need. Oh, that doesn't have enough. Need more ice, fellas. To pour from one into the other. Oh, this has some, they come. This has some color to it. You see their technique compared to the one that we've seen at Rochester, where Jeremy Bibbins just walked up and kind of grabbed hold of Derek Leonard. All right, so a little tint to that. I think they're going to hold that until maybe six yards from now in a first down. Doing a great job. You can see yeah. number 90 just kind of staring <laughs> off. <laughs> Mike Falachik, number 90. But now he's failing on the acting, doing the peek over the shoulder. No, 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 but. Right. <laughs> That's well done. <laughs> All right. Celtics, the knee. And assuming this ball does not get spotted within 25 seconds, and within five seconds, this game will be over. And bring it out. Set up perfectly. Well played. Mark Coglinese, his son, Mark Jr., on his coaching staff. Go for the emotional moment. Bring in the son for the hug. It's an outstanding decoy. Providence, with every reason to celebrate, played an outstanding game. Defense did a great job. Everyone spoke, talked about their offense coming in, but they really did a tremendous job being so aggressive with Kerry Grove, preventing them from the big plays, forcing long drives. The quest for X. X, as in Roman numeral for 10, has come true for Providence Catholic. The Celtics claim their 10th state championship, and it's the 10th year since their last. 31-28 over Cary Grove. That is the trophy that Providence Catholic will be claiming in just a matter of moments. 31-28 winners over Kelly or over Cary Grove. Let's go to Kelly Crow. Dave here with Coach Mark Coglinis. First of all, Coach. Um, that Gatorade bath had to feel pretty good. <laughs> yes, it did. I have to say so. It was your first state championship as a head coach, but the 10th for this program, and it was a battle to the very end. How meaningful does that mean to come out on top? Oh, it was just a tremendous game. Uh, you know, they were obviously a great team. Uh, you know, we just told our guys we just need one stop. We just get one stop on them. We know we can score, and that's just kind of, you know, what took us through that second half. Speak to your sophomore running back, a career night, and I don't know that you know this, but a new record in 7A, four touchdowns. Um, really? Just what he meant to this this win. Uh, Richie's outstanding. I mean, you know, what a great kid. He, he busts his tail in the weight room, does everything we ask. Uh, but, you know, they they kind of took miles away a little bit. They were double covering him, so, so we knew we had to go other ways, and uh, Richie definitely answered. Well, congratulations. Enjoy this one, Coach. Sure will. Thank you. And now with Richie Warfield, we'll send it over to Garrett Wolf. Richie, 23 carries for 123 yards and a Class 7A record, four touchdowns. How does it feel to be the young guy to come up big in the big game? Yeah, it feels incredible. I mean, I've rolled the backs of these seniors this whole entire year. Ever since the beginning, they've taken me under their wing, and they've been the best guys I could ever have asked to play for this year. I'm just so proud of the way that everyone played, and it, it was truly just an incredible feeling being out here with these boys one last time, and uh, for them to go out on top their senior year is just in incredible. They've worked so hard. They truly deserve this. Now, you guys have just completed the quest for X. How does it feel to have the support of the fans that you guys had out of here today? Uh, you know, shout out to the Providence fans. They've, they've been out to every single game. You know, we have people who don't even go to our school who are fans of us coming out here. And, you know, just the fans coming out here is a great support. And, uh, you know, they've carried us all year. And we just won one for them. Well, congratulations on a great game and a great season. And back up to the booth today. Thank you very much, Garrett. And Richie Warfield spoke of the seniors. Well, these seniors as freshmen, they did not win a conference game in the Catholic League Blue. They were blown out in several of those ball games. This was quite unexpected, at least back when they were freshmen. But once this year got rolling, 
The Celtics indeed roll only one loss a year to two Loyola but they showed what they are made of here tonight in this three point win. Well, the Catholic League Blue is such a difficult league and you know, it kind of really prepares them for their playoff runs. I mean you're playing a team like Kerry Grove it's kind of a, a combination of Joliet Catholic and Mark Mount Carmel who that Providence had just played in the semifinals but a tremendous performance. You know the offense got a lot of the buzz this year with players like Miles Boykin Justin Hunterford. But really their defense really stepped up today. They, they came to play. They held them on the on the one drive. But also what they did was that it, that turnover in the first half making a play being able to force the ball out. And this, this came down to a possession game and really winning the football game 31 to 28 and being positive in the turnover ratio. Providence all the credit to him. Well played game. Kerry Grove a tremendous season. This is a team two years ago for Kerry Grove that finished second to Creep Moni, number 67 right there. Michael Gomez, a starter on that team. All he wanted to do, Kelly mentioned it early, he wanted to get back to this game. An opportunity to once again play for a state championship. That goal was realized. And again, we, we could have gone back and forth, back and forth, but in the end, as you said, it's the turnover that makes the difference. Uh, any single stop on downs makes a difference because total yardage 343 for Kerry Grove Check, 346 one, two, three, four. for Providence Catholic that's how tight this game was played as we went up and down the field it was a great football game Kerry Grove has a lot to be proud of that man right there number 67 Michael Gomez I mean, how often do you hear in a football game people referring to the offensive line as often as we had to because of what a playmaker that this kid is you know slightly undersized for the next level in mind but I, he, he is going to make a tremendous football player at the collegiate level for whoever sees the heart and character this kid has and how disruptive a force he can be. Gary Grove will finish this season 13 and one. As we said they have that first place trophy in 2009 and here in the last three years twice they've claimed the second place trophy and this program continues to grow. We talked about it a couple of hours ago in the pregame about how 2004 when they finished second to Libertyville actually laid the groundwork for everything that's happened since. Well, Coach talked about how it was a culture change you, you tasted that little bit of success and you know a football team is molded it is made in the offseason in the weight room. And he talked about how there'd be you know some guy they'd only have a handful of guys that would make it to every offseason workout and now almost everyone is there and, that, and that's the pride and the culture that they've taken and they brought to this program and realized how good they can be in their quest for winning and how it's developed in the offseason. The one thing that Kerry Grove answered here this evening in terms of a lot of folks who were questioning did they play a tough enough schedule what would happen when they really met up with a powerhouse team well we saw how close they came to picking up the first place championship trophy that Providence Catholic will be able to hoist here in just a moment we talked about Mark Coughlin East Jr. an assistant coach for his father had never won a state championship he'd been around this program his whole life he gets one here today in fact Mark Coughlin East Jr was born on the day of a state playoff game against Joliet Catholic back in 89 and then there's Matt Sempner he was the head coach for nine state championships and assistant coach on this team but this year it's Mark Coglin's turn Mark Coglin senior <laughs> he's got some pretty pretty important hugs here in the last 10 minutes and now he will get a first place medal draped around his neck and you know Boomer you can say all you want assistance obviously so crucial to success but there's nothing like you're the head coach and your team won a state title. Well it's a coaching staff that you put together and and he's had good fortune. He, they have an outstanding coaching staff to have some people with you've heard so many coaches over the weekend talk about the stability of their staffs and how they've led to a lot of success within their programs of not having that turnover and, and these great programs stabilities within staffs occur because you have a great head coach. You have a guy that you respect, a leader that you are willing to follow. Hey, how are you? Good luck. And for the seniors, Miles Boykin right there, number 81, and next to him, Justin Hunterford. Hunterford, his second state championship in about eight months. He was part of the Providence Catholic 4A state baseball championship, but this is how you go out. Is your senior year in football. Now Boykin will move on to the basketball court as will number 84 there Nate Vavoda of Mike Madey along with Justin Hunterford. We'll play some more baseball but tonight it's all about football. Providence Catholic your class 7A state champion here in 2014. Ten years after they last won their state title. And for Providence Catholic. They raise their helmets high. 
That trophy will join them in the trophy case. Four touchdowns from Richie Warfield tonight for the Celtics. They hold on against Kerry Grove, a 31-28 winner tonight for Providence Catholic. Now for our Chicago area viewers, stick around. Comcast Sportsnet Central coming in your way. And later on, we have Stevenson home with Lossmore from Champaign.